the rocket lifts off. Nothing can hold it back. And those swing arms pivot away. Looking very relaxed in there. Everybody's done this many, many times before. Getting closer now to the one minute mark. À tous de DDO, attention pour moins une minute. Top, à zéro moins une minute. And we are one minute to launch. We're orbiting the first six satellites in the brand new OneWeb constellation built by the Airbus OneWeb Satellites joint venture. And we're flying on board the 21st Soyuz to launch from the Guiana Space Center. Our very best wishes now to all the teams. Largage du Makazedem. À tous de DDO, attention pour le début de la séquence d'allumage lanceur. À 0 moins 20 secondes. Largage du MAVKM. Allumage triétage. À tous de DDO. Attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And they are off. The first six OneWeb satellites have begun their journey, heading out north over the Atlantic towards the Caribbean. Look at that. Those engines on board Soyuz are pushing hard against Earth's gravity. We're burning five engines at the moment. He's telling us that everything on board is going according to plan. And we've got five engines. We've got one on the main stage. We've got four on each one of those boosters. But it's the boosters that are doing all the work right now. Oh, look at that streak of light heading out across the skies here at the Guiana Space Center, out over the Atlantic Ocean. The boosters only burn for two minutes. But that's long enough for Soyuz to escape the pull of our planet. We're delivering 80% of our thrust right now. And if we're lucky, we might see them falling away. I think we're going to see them being jettisoned. Look out for four dots. There we go. There they go. Look how they twist and turn. That's all part of the plan. Very beautiful sight, actually, to see that with the cameras. And now what we're left with, the... He's uh, told us that that's been confirmed. You can see that's what it looks like from in space. So they've burnt all their fuel. We don't need them anymore. And we are burning the main core stage, the block A. And uh, if you take a look... Bonne stabilisation du lanceur suite à la séparation. He's telling us that it's good stabilization after the uh, separation there of those boosters. And you take a look at the front of the launcher. That's actually called the fairing, as I mentioned earlier. And he's saying everything's going well. And uh, the satellites are in there. And indeed, that fairing has been protecting our satellites. It protects us from the rigors of the launch. A number of things it needs to protect us from, notably the acoustic vibrations at liftoff. It's very loud, I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, it's also protecting us from friction, because as we fly through the dense part of the atmosphere, that creates a lot of friction on the outside, and uh, that creates heat, of course. 
as we get higher up, the air gets thinner and we have less and less friction. And if you look at the bottom left-hand side of your screen, you can see uh, we are one, 116 kilometres above Earth. So we've gone above what we call the Kármán line. That's the border with space. So effectively, we don't really need our fairing anymore because uh, we hardly have any friction, certainly not enough for it to be a problem. And so we can jettison it. This is the scheduled moment for jettisoning the fairing, and that's what it looks like from cameras on board a previous launcher. He's confirmed that we have that separation. Now, if you have ever wondered how satellites work, how they get the internet to you, and how we all get connected, then you're in luck, because a man who knows is David Nemeth from OneWeb, and David is with me now. David, thank you very much for joining us. Hi, Katie. I'm so happy to be here. David, you're the Director of Systems Modeling at OneWeb. In a nutshell, what does that mean? So my team is responsible for doing really detailed models of the satellites flying and connecting the ground stations and connecting the users and really making sure that we've got the capacity that we want and that we know how to run the system properly. Very important work. And uh, we're coming up now on the scheduled separation of the next stage. We use a hot stage technique on Soyuz, which means we switch on the engine of the third stage before we separate the second stage. And more cameras there on a previous launch showing us... Allumage go. blocky, extinction block A et séparation. And we have the confirmation there from the range operations manager. So we are now burning the third stage and that's what it looks like. David, you can see your satellites for the first time. Can you talk through for us what we're looking at? So what we're seeing here is a the dispenser, which has four rings, which would, in this design, mount 32 satellites. We're launching six today, plus six uh, mass frequency simulators. And the first two sim satellites you saw were at the top there. Those are going to be the first two to be ejected. Um, the dispenser, the shape of the satellites are sort of a trapezoid, and they fit around. I'm just going to stop uh, for a sec stop you for a second with trapezoid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, now, if, what, can we imagine a triangle and cut the the top off? Uh, very much like it. One way to think of it is like corn on the cob, and that's like the kernel. And it's narrow at the bottom and it's wider at the top. And the satellites were actually designed that way so that we could efficiently put them in the dispenser and still use the most volume possible for our design. So with your corn on the cob analogy, then the tube that we were looking at back there in the middle uh, is the dispenser. So the tube is the corn. The tube. Uh, sorry, the <laughs> tube is the cob. The tube is the cob, which we will throw away when we're done, and the kernels are the satellites, which are we launching off now into space and which will start providing service for us. Our team's looking very relaxed in there. This, uh, the OneWeb teams, we're looking inside here, the Mission Control Center inside the fishbowl, given that it's got glass all the way around it. Just to remind uh, that we have... Uh, the information on the screen there. Now this is a replay we're going to look at. It happened, we lifted off, what, seven minutes ago from the pad, David? I sent David outside to watch it from the terraces because you can't come here and not watch it with your own eyes. What was it like, David? So I saw the satellite sitting on the ground earlier, um, and just now as I was outside, there was a fair bit of cloud cover, but we got a good view of it coming up initially and seeing the, the very, very bright flames coming out of the back. Um, and it's, it's an emotional experience. I mean, the experience is one of something we've been anticipating for a long time, and it's really exciting. But to see it going up is sort of, it's like a relief. We've arrived at a point. I know we have a lot to go, but, um, but it's just a, it's a really happy to see it sent off on its way. And you saw the launcher with the satellites inside. As you said, you saw that on the pad earlier today. That must have been quite emotional as well. That was that was uh, extraordinary. They do we, when they take you on the bus to see the satellite. You don't see it until the very end. You sort of come around the back, and then you see the open. Uh, to see the launcher, you mean? The launcher, right? You, and you come around the back, and and the doors are open on the surrounding building. Um, and there it is in all its glory. And it's uh, it was just a remarkable thing to think that the, all of this building and all of this huge launcher was all for these these satellites getting up to where we need them to go. And of course, with our, uh, our cameras, 
with our cameras, we got a very good shot as well of the uh, boosters separating, which I, I doubt you will have seen with the naked eye. Um, David, we're flying north. Can you just uh, give us a, a bit of an idea of our flight path today? Sure. So this satellite's going into a polar orbit, which means that it's going to be flying over the poles. Um, it's going to start off coming up from French Guiana, which is on the equator, up past uh, the east of Canada over the North Pole. And then it's going to come down the other side past China, Southeast Asia, um, through Australia, swing over the South Pole, and then come up again um, a little bit west of here because the Earth will have turned a little bit while the satellite has gone around. So we're tracking the launcher using what we call telemetry. We have uh, telemetry stations or tracking stations picking up the signal. And uh, Bermuda is the station we're using right now. This is the separation now of the third stage. It's burnt its fuel every time each section of the launcher. And we have confirmation there of that separation. Every time the launcher, a uh, section of the launcher uses up its uh, and he is uh, confirming there that we've picked up the signal at the tracking station in Bermuda. So that's good. Um, so we're starting the next phase of the journey now. The frigate upper stage is taking the wheel. It's getting ready to switch its engine on, actually. It's called the pre-burn phase, which means it gives a quick burst of acceleration to push the fluids back into the tanks and that's uh, to make sure that there's enough propellant in the engine. It's a, bit, it's a bit like, isn't it, when you're in a car and you, you press the accelerator and you get pushed against the seat. Exactly. I think of it more like it's when you have a bottle of ketchup and the ketchup's not coming out and then you just get air and you give it a good shake and all of the ketchup goes to the front so that you can squeeze it out in this nice smooth squirt. That's exactly what we're doing with the fuel in the frigate right now. <laughs> so... The upper stage is taking us, I, I, I guess you could think of it as a bit of a kind of clever taxi driver, if you like. It can take its uh, satellites anywhere they want to go. Where, where is it taking you guys today? So our initial orbit today, uh, as I said, is a polar orbit. We're going to go up to a thousand kilometers um, and they will be dropped off there. Um, at that point, the OneWeb system will, the OneWeb uh, flight operations team will take control of them um, and raise them up to their final orbit of 1,200 kilometers. So they have another 200 kilometers to go after today. So they've got a bit of a journey, and they'll be doing those 200 kilometers on their own, was supported obviously by the, the teams on the ground. It's all automated. Um, just a quick run through of what you're looking at on the screen. Top right hand corner, the trajectory, the planned trajectory and the cross is the actual position and there on the bottom right is the flight path you can see there that David just talked us through. Now let's see how Ariane Space has met the challenge of creating the OneWeb. Tonight is the Soyuz launch VS-21, the second launch of the year and more importantly the first launch of the ambitious OneWeb's constellation program. The S-21 mission is to bring the first six OneWeb spacecraft into a lower orbit, close to that.